Okay, so we'll, we'll press ahead. So what we're going to hopefully cover in this session, uh, my name's Lawrence O'Sullivan Whiting, um, and I'm the apprenticeship lead at Great Ormond Street. I'm wonderfully supported by the Learning Academy and our education, our education team. We've got a couple of them here today, Alice and Ansel. Um, who work in different specialities in the hospital and they're going to give you more information about the apprenticeships that are available. So I'm just going to run through some facts about Great Ormond Street, who we are, where we're from, what we do, uh, our courses that we've got and how many apprentices we've currently got and that might surprise you, the benefits of being an apprentice and how to apply and what other options are available to you in the NHS. So that's really small writing, but I'm going to tell you exactly what that says. So basically, Great Ormond Street employs more than 5,000 employees. There are mixtures of AHPs, scientists, cleaners, IT technicians, data analysts, HR, learning and development, the list is endless. We have 63 different clinical specialities, and we're one of the leaders in the world with clinical research into childhood, childhood Ill illness. Recently, GOSH launched its Above and Beyond strategy, which is a five-year strategy where we're actually looking at our people strategy and developing our own talent within the workforce to bring about growing our own doctors, nurses, leaders, and scientists of the future. So in, in terms of our apprentices at GOSH, um, we look at our apprenticeships at GOSH as an alternative to university. And I, and I mean that statement as an alternative to university. Many young people are told at, at school and at college that you have to go to university to achieve your career goals. That isn't the case. I'm a firm believer that apprenticeships are the future of education in this country. The reason for that is simple. You work, you earn money, you learn on the job, you don't incur debt, and you actually learn quicker, in my opinion. So that's why I think apprenticeships work. Currently to this day, I'm speaking too loudly at points, but maybe people might hear me. So we've got 220 apprentices at GOSH, and that's growing month on month. We've also got 10 different entry roles, which require you to have no previous experience to join us. And I think that's really important when you're looking at your next career. The roles that are included in this include IT, healthcare, admin, project management, finance, science, and many more. We've got a very good website now that we've tried to make really intuitive and really easy to use so you can see what's available to you, and we'll share those links as well. We should have some new roles and vacancies coming in 22, 23, and I think the key with the, the whole of this slide is the bottom one. My goal for our apprenticeships at Great Ormond Street is to create a career pathway for every single role via apprenticeships. So that's our end goal. In terms of being an apprentice, what are the benefits? And I've already said that you incur no debt, so your employer pays for your qualification. That's a massive benefit. You're also a full-time student again, so you get all the perks of being a student. That means you get student discounts, student Oyster card. You also get um, discounts all over the place for your shopping, for your Amazon Music, you name it. It's there. You learn on the job. Now, what you get the benefit of doing, if you learn at university, you've got your lecturer, you've got maybe your support group around you and your other students that are doing the course with you. As an apprentice, you get experts in your team supporting you. You get your mentors supporting you. In our case, our GOSH Learning Academy and our education team. You also get your managers plus your mentor group and your, your, your provider that's actually delivering the course to you. So the support network is even bigger. You also get dedicated time to, for learning. You might have heard this term called 20% off the job, which I don't like the term off the job. I actually call it on the job learning because that's what you do as an apprentice. So in terms of the apprentices that we, apprenticeships that we do, they're vast and varied. And I'm gonna whiz through these slides because there's literally too many to name. But these are all apprenticeships that we've got delivered at Great Ormond Street at this present day. And you can see we've got a mixture of clinical programs, allied health professionals, IT, management and leadership, and we've got other speciality apprenticeships in teaching, improvement specialists, coaching, and service improvement. We tried to group them together on our website as well, so if you're thinking about a career in business admin or even HR, you can see how you can, I'll give HR as an example. You could start as a HR apprentice and start at level three, 
and actually work your way all the way up through the HR qualifications to become fully qualified in your CIPD and be our next HR director. That's how you can achieve your goals. We've just procured, and it's not on there at the moment, for a new level seven CIPD qualification, which is a master's. So you can actually work your way all the way up in HR. So the reason I'm giving that as, a, as an example is that a lot of people, when they look at the NHS and they look at Great Ormond Street, A, they might think we're too specialised to work for, but equally that everyone that works in the NHS is either a doctor or a nurse, and that's not the case. That's a nice busy slide for you to look at, but what I've tried to do is um, group the apprenticeships that we've got in terms of speciality. So as you can see, we've got career pathways in business administration, data analysis, nursing, allied health, science, IT, human resources, finance, teaching, support services, and improvement apprenticeships, and that's gonna keep on growing. So my key takeaways really from the bit that I'm going to deliver to you today really is that apprenticeships combine work and study and that's, that's a really key element to me, uh, for me with apprenticeships. You are employed and paid and equally your qualification is paid for. So that's a win-win for you as an individual. The employer has the duty to give you the release time to do your on-the-job training and your off-the-job training and you will receive that. You don't have to fight for that, that's already built into your apprenticeship. All apprenticeships are now governed by Ofsted and the NMC national standards. That means that when you qualify in your apprenticeship, it's recognised by all the registered bodies. So it's the same degree as you get at university. It's exactly the same. Same certificate, in fact. So I'm going to move on to our healthcare support worker apprenticeship and our nursing apprenticeship. We're going to hand over to our expert in that field, Alice. Um, my name's Alice. I'm the practice educator for nursing apprentices at GOSH. So I have a wonderful job, which is to support the nursing apprentices in practice. Um, at present, we have about 30. Um, some of them are joining us today. Um, we've got the lovely Dimple, who is a registered nurse degree apprentice. We've got Charlie, who is a top-up. So she's a registered um, nursing associate at present and topping up to become a nurse. And we have the lovely Ellie as well, who is doing the healthcare support worker apprenticeship. Um, so the pathway to becoming a nurse um, is really fantastic because you can literally come um, to Great Ormond Street with no prior experience and do the healthcare support worker program and use that as your stepping stone into nursing. So. And the Healthcare Support Worker Pro, um, Apprenticeship is level two. Um, the entry requirements can be seen on here. Um, and uh, it incorporates um, studying time, um, time on your ward. You'll be integrated within the team. It might be an outpatients team or an inpatients team. Um, you'll attend different study days, learn all, that, all about the different body systems, um, and you'll be able to apply that in practice as well with your clinical skills. So once you've got that as your foundation, um, you will receive your qualification which will be a level two apprenticeship um, we ask for a year's consolidation in that role so that you can um, really find your feet um, and um, become integrated in the team and once you've completed uh, a year as a healthcare assistant uh, you'll be able to apply for the registered nurse degree apprenticeship which is an amazing program that we offer um, it's run over either a three or a four year pathway depending on which pathway you go through um, it combines 50% of the time on placement, doing your placement hours, and then 50% of the time you are um, at university, so doing your modules, doing your exams, your drug calculations, um, and eventually your dissertation as well. So you will come out, like Lawrence said, with the degree um, as a, a degree in children's nursing with registration with the NMC as a children's nurse. So um, we do most of our placements in-house at GOSH, so you will be able to get an exposure to lots of different specialities, so you can um, get that exposure and find out for yourself which kind of area of nursing that you want to work in. So it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity um, and please share far and wide with your um, friends, your family members, your colleagues, people that might be interested. Um, the way into this is through the Level 2 Healthcare Support Worker Apprenticeship. Um, so I just wondered if Ellie might like to share um, just a little bit about how you got into the healthcare support worker role that you're in and what, what you'd like to do next. I think you don't have to stand. No, okay. you can't just do it from here. Yeah. 
So my name's Ellie and I happened to just stumble across the healthcare support worker. Um, it came across on the emails and then I went online and I thought I'm just going to go for it. I was a little bit worried because I didn't have A-levels. I always knew university wasn't for me and um, I'm a little bit older so I thought if this is only for young people they're not going to want to take me. So I managed to apply and I got in and I started last September and I cannot praise it enough because I've always wanted to be in the NHS but I felt that um, I was never clever enough or confident enough to go in and do it but this has given me the opportunity to start my career in the NHS. Um, I was a bit worried about timings and fitting family life in but all of the work is done at on the job, they don't want you to take anything home. There is a perfect work home life balance. I have an amazing support network around me. Not only do I have the educators, the hospitals filled with apprenticeships who are more than happy to help and give you advice. You've got your team and your line managers and everybody is open. They want to keep their staff and they want to train you and they want you to be passionate. So they put a lot of their time into helping you and I cannot praise it enough and once I've done this course which I should complete in September I plan to then go and take the nursing course and start my career in the NHS. Thank you so much Ellie. Um, so as I mentioned before um, we have a couple of routes so um, some if you're a registered nursing associate already then you can um, do the top-up course to become a registered nurse um, or you can do the RNDA which is the registered nurse degree apprenticeship which is the full program um, so we have Charlie with us who is a top-up uh, registered nursing associate top up, topping up to be a registered nurse um, and Charlie's just going to talk a little bit about the support that she's received while she's on her course. Hello, um, so I'm currently a registered nurse and associate um, and I've been at GOSH for six years now. Um, something that's really important to me that I have found at Great Ormond Street is that uh, the support network we have as registered professionals but also as students. We've got a fantastic education team. Um, we've got a student education team but also for our registered professionals we've got an uh, education team as well and the support that you get from those people is just just um, extensive, it's fantastic, but also you've got the peer support as well, and because you're working on the job, you become part of a team, and so uh, you gain relationships, like professional relationships, you get working relationships, friendships, and those are the people that help you through your training, through your careers, help you to develop and um, become the best health prof professional you can be, so yeah. Thank you so much, Charlie. So um, now I'm going to pass you over to Ansel, who is going to talk to you about al uh, careers in allied health professionals and healthcare science. Thank you, everybody. So my name's Ansel, and I am the practice educator for healthcare science. But today I will also talk about careers in allied healthcare professionals. So whenever you think about a careers in hospital, uh, clinical, you always think doctors and nurses. But there are also another staffing group called the allied healthcare professionals. These include careers such as physiotherapy, occupational therapy, dietetics, and many more. They are a diverse group of clinicians who deliver high quality holistic care to patients. And they have a wide range of care pathways and are involved in a very, very different settings, whether it be an inpatient ward or an outpatient clinic. They focus on prevention and improvement of health and well-being. So here are the 14 different allied healthcare professionals you can be involved in. At Great Ormondshire, I've always focused on the physiotherapist and the dietetics, but we've also got many others. And anywhere in the NHS, you can get involved in a job or a friendship to get involved in one of these. These start quite similarly at entry level as an assistant and can produce through to degree programs as well. And next, I'm going to talk about healthcare scientists. So, you may not know this, but over 80% of diagnoses in the NHS are made by a scientist. These scientists work in laboratories and are patient facing as well. There are over 50,000 of them in the NHS, over four different groupings physiological sciences, life sciences, medical physics and clinical engineering, and bioinformatics. And this is the career pathway that shows both apprenticeships and the traditional way. 
Traditionally, scientists would go to university, complete a three to four year degree, qualify through what's called the practitioner training pathway, and enter the NHS. They then could choose to go on to more specialist training called the Scientific Training Program, or STP, to go up to more senior levels, before becoming a consultant clinical scientist by completing something called the HSST, the High Science Specialist Scientific Training Program. But now with apprenticeships, we can offer an entry level before a degree comes into play. Through our level two and level four programs, you do not need to have any prior learning experience. We only ask you to have GCSE Maths and English. We can get you through the assistant and associate apprenticeships before we now have launched this year and next year, the Healthcare Scientist Practitioner Degree Program, which is a four year degree. And as Lawrence said earlier, these scientists will get the same degree as the people at university. They'll have spent four years working on the job and they will not be in any debt. Furthermore, looking to the future, there is going to be a level seven program being launched and this will be the equivalent of the master's level for scientists. Thank you, Ansel. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Charlie, for your contributions. So what we would say is that sometimes you'll think as well it's really difficult to apply for these, uh, these job roles and these apprenticeships and it, it, re it really isn't. If you go on our websites, we've got the links on here, feel free to take a picture of the slide. Um, the team are still here, so if you want to speak to us afterwards, come and talk to us about our vacancies. But it's really easy to apply. Now a lot of job roles that you go for nowadays and apprenticeships are very much the same, that you can't just send in your CV. So the biggest advice I'll give you if you're ever doing an application is actually speak about your passion for that job, why you want to be in that career and why you want to work for that employer and that should come across in your application. If you've got some questions for the team, um, we've actually got a YouTube channel, it's really new, go and check it out, there's loads of our apprenticeship videos on there, um, you'll hear from our apprentices about their first hand experience, you'll hear from our education team about the support they provide and you'll also hear from us as an employer about the value apprenticeships bring to Great Ormond Street Hospital. So please have a look at that and as I say we're here for a well, I don't know how much longer but come and speak to us as a team and thanks for your time today.